Are you ready for a rewarding career in the electrical industry? Quality Electric of the Coastal Carolinas, QECC, is looking for qualified electricians and electrical helpers to join its Charleston team. QECC offers guaranteed full-time hours, make up to $30 per hour with possible performance bonuses and career growth opportunities. Enjoy benefits like health insurance, dental and vision coverage, 401k plans, and more. If you're a motivated, experienced electrician, this job is for you. QECC is an equal opportunity employer. For all job inquiries, send email to hr at qeccinc.com. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, weaver of the stuff that nightmares are made of. It was Shakespeare who said, You only live once. It was Goethe who said, You only die once. And Nathan Hale said he regretted he had only one life to give to his country. From all this, then, we gather that all we have is this one time, this one life. However, this may not be entirely true. According to a gentleman you're about to meet, you may have as many lives as you can intelligently arrange for. Our mystery drama, The Coffin with the Golden Nails, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Stop in at any of the 16 convenient American Express travel service offices in the New York area. For any airline ticket, see American Express. Don't leave home without it. In the midst of life, we are in the midst of death, the book tells us. And this should teach us that survival is largely a matter of perception. And perception is the ability to see through the trappings directly into the heart of the matter. Therefore, people with perception never overstay their welcome, never overplay their hand, and are never caught in the rain without an umbrella. A man of perception was Ramon Zoya, Colonel Ramon Zoya, chief of the secret police of one of those little nickel-and-dime dictatorships somewhere south of the border. The colonel had an ingrained cruelty and a sheer delight in the sufferings of helpless human beings. We're about to witness the colonel at work. One moment, if you please. I am Colonel Ramon Carlos Vicente Maria de Soria y Sanchez. And this is my story. And I resent the way the gentleman has presented me. I am not some monstrous, sadistic brute. As a dedicated patriot, I was part of a holy crusade to restore law, order, decency, and respect to my beloved country. Well... She refuses to talk, Colonel. Refuses? Refuses? Young woman, is it possible that you believe you're attending a dance where you may grant or refuse a gentleman the pleasure of a walk? What does this animal call herself? Anita Dionis. Anita Dionis. Uh, Corporal, hand me a whip. Now, Anita Dionis, you have a pretty face. You also have some information. You may not keep both. Which shall you give up? Who are your companions? Choose. Very well. You have chosen. <laughs> yes? Who? A Mr. Chrysalis. 
I never heard of him. Send him away. Ah, Colonel. I am Mr. Chrysalis. I told my sergeant you are not to be admitted. I'll teach you. You should teach him how to block a right cross to the chin. I could have you shot. Uh, sit down before I take my business elsewhere. Do you know who you're talking to? How old are you? 30, 35? Very good bones on that face. We can do a lot with them. And you were a school teacher before you got into all of this. What did you teach? I was an assistant professor of zoology at the university. Now, see here. My what? name is Mr. Chrysalis. I am sales manager of Metamorphosis Incorporated. My card, sir? What does all this mean? You, a biologist, ask the meaning of metamorphosis? I know what it means. A transmutation, a transformation from one life to another. Precisely. And now I've had enough of it. And this that is what I propose to do with you. Ask me why. Why? Within 90 days, the revolution will come to this country. <laughs> Who has told you this fairy tale? This Soon you shall have a new government, which will do unto you as you did unto others. I am here to sell you insurance. Insurance? What kind of insurance are you talking about? The name of our company answers your question. Metamorphosis? Yes. All of our clients have been metamorphosized into other people, and they lead their new lives out in the open. <laughs> You must be insane. Consider the monarch butterfly. It leads two distinctly different lives. First, a caterpillar, an ugly, crawling creature with a ground eye view of life. Second, a butterfly, beautiful, airborne, free. Let us say one is seeking the caterpillar. Does one look for him in the butterfly? Crystal. Ah, enlightenment. Now you know the meaning of my name, Chrysalis, the cocoon, the safe, snug haven where the metamorphosis takes place, the dark brown shell with the bright yellow spots. Uh, what do you call it? The coffin with the golden nail. Precisely. And you shall enter that coffin not to die, but to be born again. How? A complete plastic surgery for your face. And you will teach zoology in an American university. But how? You will have documents, a birth certificate, diplomas, recommendations. But I can't. I don't speak English. You will. And with an authentic Midwestern accent. This, this is our hope. It will require a full year of round-the-clock concentration and study. That is why the fee is one million dollars. One million? I don't have a million dollars. The chief of secret police doesn't have at least a million dollars? Sir, you insult my intelligence. Now, for one million dollars, you become Dr. Stanley Parker. Stanley Parker, assistant professor of zoology at Southwest A&M in the good old U.S. of A. I, I, I understand what you say. I even see... How it might be done. I could change my face and learn the language, but... But what is the problem? <laughs> I am the problem. Me. Something in me was never satisfied with the academic life. Something in me demanded, will always demand, action, excitement, and, yes, violence. I could never settle down. I, I need violence. No, no. Colonel Ramon Zoria was the caterpillar. Stanley Parker shall be the butterfly. There will be nothing of Zoria in Parker. Your attitude toward life shall be different. You will believe in a new philosophy. Be moved by another psychology. We shall change more, much more than your face and your voice. Zoria was a devil. Parker shall be a saint. It required more than a year, even more than two years. I was taken to an island somewhere in the West Indies, exactly where I cannot say. And in that place, Ramon Carlos Vicente Maria de Zoria y Sanchez died slowly, 
slowly, and a man named Stanley Zebulon Parker was born. That is not to say that all memory of Carlos died. Oh, no, I remembered everything about him, everything he was, but he was no longer me. His speech was no longer mine. His long, narrow head seemed to be rounder, his nose shorter, his chin wider. This needed the better part of a year. All visible traces of Amon Zoria were gone, but my original fears remained. I told you it would come slowly. Look at yourself. Listen. Who would even dream you were Ramon Zoria? I would. Yes, I agree. I am the voice and the image of a man named Stanley Parker, but I still... I still think and feel like Ramon Zoria. Of course. Of course. And you must help us change you. In the change is your true safety. The caterpillar enters the chrysalis, the coffin with the golden nails, and within he is given more than a different form and shape. He is given another mind. And I was changed. I don't know how it was done. I don't remember. I, I know another year went by. I lived in a constant sea of what must have been electric currents. I was always feeling waves of shock. There were always electrodes, always sparks, always the sharp smell of electricity. I was someone else. Oh, don't say a human being cannot be changed. I know better. I know. Do you remember Ramon Zoria? Yes, I remember him. Do you remember being him? Yes. What's the matter? Are you ill? Yes, I... I, I, feel, I feel... An attack of nausea coming? Yes. Every time I think of Zoria, I... I can't help it. I'm... I feel sick. Why? His loud voice, any loud, harsh voice, disturbs me. The gun, that heavy automatic pistol, I... I can't stand the idea of it. And a knife, a dagger, and a whip. These things... Just the... I'm dizzy. And killing? The thought of killing, of hurting, of inflicting pain on any living creature. Even for a good reason? There's never a good reason. Well, Professor Parker, I would say that you are just about ready to fly. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to read your name badge. Professor Dionis. <laughs> I'm Anita Dionis. How do you do? I'm Stanley Parker. Biology. I've come here to teach Latin American literature. Oh, that's interesting. I can't say I've read very much literature of Latin America. Well, aren't you going to ask me about it? Ask you about what? You've been staring at it for the past half hour. Staring? The scar on my face. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. It's just that it's so... Horrible. Oh. <laughs> I'm accustomed to having people stare at me. May I ask how it came about? Oh, some years ago, the government of my country, the democratic government, was destroyed by a military junta. And my family, the Deonis family... The, uh, Deonis family? Oh, I'm sure you've never heard of us. But we all joined the underground, and I was captured. I had the honor to be interrogated by the head of the secret police himself, a monster called Colonel Ramon Zoria. Zoria? Interrogated. He slashed me across the face with his whip. Oh, no. Oh, I... I'm sorry. Why, you've gone so pale. You look ill. Please, sit down. Could, could I get you something? Uh, I... I don't know what came over me. Oh, well, you know, the Americans. <laughs> this is so foreign to your experience. I understand there's been another revolution down there. Yes. The swine has been driven out. Some of the big ones have gone into hiding all over the world. But one by one, we smoke them out. We? Oh, we have justice teams. My own brother leads one. And day and night he seeks Zoria. Zoria murdered our father. Dionise. 
I don't even remember that name. But why would you remember? Uh, a daughter mutilated, a father murdered. When I say I don't remember, I don't remember reading about it. Oh, I'm sure even Zoria himself wouldn't remember. We were among hundreds of thousands, millions in every country. We are the nameless ones. About, about that scar, they... They do wonders with plastic surgery these days. Yes, I know. But I must continue to wear the scar to remind me that Ramon Zaria has not yet been brought to justice. Oh? Is it, is it possible, perhaps, he may be dead? Well, we will only be convinced when someone has seen his dead body. And until that time, the hunt will continue. But why do we talk of such things? I am sure it has no real meaning for you. She touched a nerve when she said, I'm sure even Zaria himself wouldn't remember. And it's tragically true. Zaria himself did forget all about her. The day, the hour, the minute after he slashed her face. And here we have Stanley Parker, a man with a present and future, but no past. Because that past, which belongs to Ramon Zaria, has been transformed. Can Stanley Parker survive him? I'll be back in just a few moments with Act Two. He would torture and kill all who disagreed with him. Stanley Parker will faint at the sight, even the thought of blood. And yet, Zoria and Parker are one and the same human being. How is it possible? Why do you even ask? Consider what has already occurred in this, the age we live in. Is anything impossible? Good evening, Professor Parker. Oh, it's Mr. Chrysalis. May I come in? Thank you. Sit down. What What can I do for you? I'm here to sell you some more insurance. Oh, but I really don't need any. Oh, but you do. Suppose someone were hunting for you, and he started to come close. Oh, but that's impossible. There's nothing of Ramon Zaria about me anymore. I spoke to a young lady just last week. She'd have a good reason to know Ramon Zaria, but she never... Well, what if this lady, or her brother, or someone else, what you somehow unravel? But I'm not Zoria. You know that. I'm someone else. Precisely. You are a person who is unable to protect himself. Therefore, metamorphosis will see to it that you are protected at all times. But I don't need... Look, I dislike arguments. Our fee is 10% of your annual salary. Even if someone were to threaten me, I'm unable to... You care. will not have to. We do it for you. I will not be a party to any killing... And nevertheless, we shall insist on our fee. It's blackmail. It's in your best interest. Now, about Miss Dionys. Campus gossip has it you see a great deal of her. I feel drawn to her. Do you have a feeling of guilt? Yes. But why? What has Stanley Parker to do with the deeds of Ramon Zoria? Is the butterfly to blame for the depredations of the worm? Maybe it's more than that. Maybe... I'm falling in love with her. Do I dare... My boy, you are a brand new human being. You may dare anything. <laughs> yes. That's a terrible case. But at least I come from a tropical country. What's your excuse? <laughs> I, I never got around to learning. But I thought all North Americans knew how to kick. Oh, well, that's like saying all South Americans know how to tango. <laughs> They probably do. <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? I'm having fun. Are you? Oh, it's been so many years since I could do something silly like this. By the last time I was out with a man, he was my group leader. And we walked arm and arm down San Sebastian Boulevard. In Aragonia, <laughs> the main street. That's right, it is. But how would you know? I, I've become interested in your country. Why? Because it's your country, and everything about you interests me. <laughs> we pretended we were lovers. Under my dress was an ammunition belt. Under his coat was a submachine gun. 
And that's why I feel so good right now. Just to be out with a handsome man, to be a woman again. <laughs> It was a great afternoon. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, why don't you come in? Perhaps I could find something for supper. Oh, I wouldn't want you to go to any trouble. Oh, well, you must tell me all about yourself, Stanley. Why are you afraid? Always afraid that you may cause someone trouble. I want to know everything about you. There isn't much to tell. Oh, there's a whole lifetime to tell. All right, now into the kitchen and we'll see what's in the refrigerator. I'm a terrible housekeeper. <laughs> Some eggs and... You speak English perfectly. Well, I was educated in the United States. I, I only returned home so I could fight against the hunter. Was that the only reason you returned? Oh, I suppose I was an idealist. You say was? Well, <laughs> not so much anymore. Why? Well, regardless of who's in power, somebody is going to be persecuted. That is the story of the world. I know. But maybe we should be trying to write a new ending to that story. I would rather hear about your story. My story? Where were you born? In the United States. <laughs> Is that silly? Where? Indianapolis. Do you know, I went to college with a girl from Indianapolis. I visited her quite often. Her name was Helen Morrison. Did you know the Morrison? No, I don't believe so. Where did you go to college? Northern Institute of Technology. But Helen Morrison married a boy from there. Um, what was his name? I was maid of honor at the wedding. Can't remember his name. Walter Pierce. Did you know him? No. Anita. Fernando. Oh, why didn't you tell me you were coming? Stanley, my brother, Fernando de Anis. Fernando, Stanley Parker. How do you do? Anita, where were you all afternoon? Stanley and I were skating. I hope you had a good time. What's wrong? Yes, you had a good time. Your cheeks are flushed, your eyes are sparkling. And Ramon Zaria is still alive. I'm sorry. We I'm swore sorry. on our father's grave that we wouldn't rest on... I know, I know that. And so what have you done today that has brought us closer to this month? Today I did something for me. Sit. sit quietly. Let us all sit quietly. And me is someone who has become very dear to me. Very close to me. And he will be your brother to help make up for the brother we lost. Stanley, can you say something to Fernando? What can I say? I'm not a man of violence. You you know that, Anita. But that's why you should say something. Because the men of violence have nothing to say to us anymore. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And let us leave it to him. No. You must. Why? Because it must all end somewhere. The violence, the destruction, must end. Yes? Shall I publish a notice? Run a worldwide advertisement to Colonel Ramon Zaria. Wherever you are, you are safe, you are forgiven, rejoice. <laughs> we would love to hear that. Ramon Zaria is not laughing these days at anyone. How would you know? Is it beyond possibility that Zaria may have learned and that he has become someone else? That monster can learn nothing. He has to be destroyed. And I know. I'm close to him. How do you know? Because we captured Martinez. Juan Martinez? El Borracho? How would you know Juan Martinez? Because of me. Stanley has become an authority on our country. Martinez was taken by my team. He was living in England. And he had the most fantastic cover. He was pausing as an Englishman. Posing. More than that, passing. His face had been changed. His voice was different. He spoke English perfectly. And still, you were able to get... He talked before he died. He was always a bull of jelly. <laughs> and he told the most fantastic yarn. He said, there's an organization that specializes in changing people. <laughs> he said that? Yes. Okay. It rearranges people completely. But why would he say a thing like that? Uh, to stall for time. Uh. Obviously, he was hoping to make a deal with us to save his life. He even named the organization. He did? Yes. Metamorphosis Incorporated. Metamorphosis? How far fetched as it seemed. I wanted to let him talk more, but the others were hot heads. They killed him. But when I searched his desk, I found a check. He had just written it. Pay to the order of Metamorphosis $5,000. What else did you find out? He was right. 
There is such an organization, and it can change people. You should see how it changed him. But I don't care how it changed Zoria. I'll find him, too. Hello? No, Anita. I haven't gone to bed yet. I called because I wanted to know if you're all right. Oh, I'm fine. I know you are quite uncomfortable this evening. Fernando can sound so bloodthirsty. Uh, I, I understand, Fernando. Oh, darling. You understand everyone, and that's why, that's why I love you. Oh, perhaps I shouldn't have said that. I love you, too. Yes, yes, darling. I promise. Good night. My guest. Good night. Who? Hello? Fernando. Good evening. Fernando, what can I do for you? You can tell me about metamorphosis. You know all about metamorphosis, don't you? Colonel Zoria. <laughs> He does know all about metamorphosis, but how does Fernando know that? The disguise was perfect, the cover was flawless, the personality change was complete, and yet here we have Fernando ready to pull the trigger. What could have gone wrong? What little detail was overlooked, if any? Why don't you try to solve it? And we can check each other out when I return in just a few moments with Act Three. <laughs> there's no such thing as the perfect crime, can there be such a thing as the perfect cover-up? Everything about Stanley Parker differs from Colonel Ramon Zaria. Appearance, language, personality, and yet Fernando de Onis sees right through the disguise. He looks at Parker and perceives Zaria, bearing out, of course, what we had said about perception at the very beginning of our story. But what has he perceived? Why do you call me Ramon Zoria? That's who you are. Do you deny it? Yes. I can prove it. I am not Zoria. Now. <laughs> yes, true. You were Zoria. Yes. The last time we confronted each other, you placed a pistol against my head. You remember? I don't remember. Don't lie. I don't remember because there were so many of you. So many thousands of you. How can I remember? Do you know how we found your friend Martinez? Through his fingerprints. Can you imagine? This metamorphosis makes such seemingly magical changes. But the fingerprints remain the same. And you found me through my fingerprints? Yes. How? It was a joke on my part. I carry the fingerprints of all of you always. On the chance... <laughs> Tonight I couldn't sleep. I said, Sorry, will be completely different. He will be someone I would never suspect. And what made you suspect me? <clears throat> Nothing. I said to myself, who is the least likely person? Why, Stanley Parker. He is so obviously a Midwestern American. <laughs> oh, but Stanley is a zoologist. So was Zoria. And I was laughing to myself. It was, uh, it was so silly. I said, well, let us check the fingerprints. Just as an exercise. Yours were on a glass. And what will you do with me? Kill you. Does Anita know? She'll have to. Why? You can have Zoria, but let her keep Parker. At least in her memory. No. The whole world must know. Especially the scum who are still in hiding. Let them realize there is no escape. You're not going to kill Ramon Zoria. He is already dead. I listen to you. You know how? The way you listen to others. With deaf ears. He died on an island long ago. He will die here and now. Go ahead and pray. And what's wrong with praying? It's the will of the Lord that I be found. I'm content. You may kill me. I... I was hoping you would put up a fight. Uh, I would beg for your mercy. That would make it easier for you, wouldn't it? Or offer me a fortune the way Martinez did. How can you stand there quietly as if you're judging me? What am I going to do with you? 
What you set out to do? Kill me. No, no. I... Oh, we didn't set out to kill. We wanted to bring you, all of you, to justice. Then bring me to justice. But you're not Maria. Not anymore. Who, who am I bringing to justice? Allow me to solve your problem. No, don't. Oh! You killed him. Of course. Why? Why did you kill him? My dear boy, I have a very substantial investment to protect. You didn't have to kill him? In another minute, you'd have been weeping on each other's shoulder. Why did you kill him? You see now the value of an insurance policy? Come, we must dispose of his body. What did the police say? They said it was a hold-up that he was robbed on the street. It happened. No! It was Zoria. Zoria? It can only mean Zoria felt Fernando was coming closer. It means Zoria must be here. Somewhere. But how could Zoria be here? Because Fernando is dead. Oh, Stanley. Stanley, please help me. You're all I have left in the world now. Say you'll help me. Say you'll help me find Zoria. Kill him. Promise. I promise. Well, what have you been doing with yourself lately, Mr. Parker? Oh, what do you want? I've had some disturbing reports about you. Such as? Such as drinking. Even as Uriah, you never join me. Oh, no, 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 no. Besides, we have a very serious matter to discuss. Anita Dionis. What about Anita Dionis? She'll destroy you. That's a lie. Look at yourself. I stood by while you killed a man here in my home. Well, that was necessary. It was murder. And I'm as guilty as if I had pulled the trigger. I can't face her, and I can't face myself, and I don't know what to do. The answer is not in the bottle. There's no answer at all anywhere. I'm what you made me. Stanley Parker. Idealist, pacifist, lover of all mankind. It's a delicate operation, as you know. And perhaps we went just a tiny bit too far. How can you go too far? Well, you can endow a man with too much love. We did that to you. We should make an adjustment. We'll have to teach you to accept killing. No. You understand the necessity for it. You will have to accept a certain fact of life. What? We shall have to kill Anita Dionis. Oh, Never. She is about ready to uncover your identity. What do you mean? She's getting there. Slowly. Very soon she will discover that she must kill you. Before that happens, you must have your adjustment. I don't know what it was. Perhaps it was... Perhaps it was all a bad dream. But it was like that first time with, with the electricity. The sharp, searing, exquisite pain... And certain thoughts were clashing in my brain. Ideas. This is not a perfect world. Man does what he must. The art of compromise. No laws are absolute. Morality is relative. And I don't know. Had I gone back to the island, or was it another bad dream? But there was, a, there was an idea in my head. An idea. I knew I had to call Anita and ask her something. Ask her to go somewhere. Anita? Hello, stranger. Where have you been? I, I've been busy. I was wondering, can't have a picnic lunch tomorrow? We can go into the country. Yes, he, I. Oh. What is it? Stanley, I have some questions I'd like to ask you. Oh, such as? It, it can wait till tomorrow. Stanley, I would like to ask you a question. Yes. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Stanley Parker. Who is Stanley Parker? Stanley Parker is a man who loves you very much and wants to marry you. Trying to know you is like trying to hold Quicksilver. You see, I checked up on you. Oh? What made you do that? I don't know. But there is no record of your being born in Indianapolis, Indiana. I have a birth certificate. But the record does not exist in their record. And there's no record of your having attended Northeastern Institute of Technology. I have a diploma. But 
The record does not exist at the school. Not a single teacher can remember you. Who are you? Who do you think I am? You... You are the real, aren't you? Yes. You know what I have to do now, don't you? I have to kill you. Well, I... I've become someone else. It's too late. I'm Stanley Parker. You love me. Oh, this has nothing to do with you, at this. This concerns a monster named Zoria. Do you mean you would shoot me, actually shoot me? I am prepared. I'm sorry oh. to intervene at such a tender moment. You will please allow that pistol to fall to the ground, Miss Dunis. That's it. Splendid. Pick it up, Stanley. Very good. Now, unfortunately... You... Do we have to kill her? Oh, yes. Look, we can let her go. We can make her promise. Can we make you promise anything, Miss Gurney? No. But to kill... Oh, come now. That's what we worked on these past few weeks. Yes, but I... First law of life. What is it? Survival. Say it again. Survival. The second great law of life. Kill or be killed. How does that square with the commandment, thou shalt not kill? We here below are imperfect creatures. You're 35 years old. You have more than half your life ahead of you. A beautiful, happy, productive life. Shall you throw it away for her? No. Then shoot her. It's your life or hers. You don't believe me? Ask her. Ask her. Anita, is it true? Yes. Your life or mine. You'll have to kill her, Stanley. Why me? Why not you? Both of us will be guilty of the murder. Shall it make a difference which one pulls the trigger? No. Then you do it. Anita, we could find a way. The past is dead. No, it's alive. It has just been reborn. Metamorphosis. I see it happening. How strange. In reverse. Parker is becoming Zoria. No. You can have certain ideals, you can have your life, but you cannot have both. You must give up one. Choose. And now Parker is talking like Zoria. Shoot her. I am not talking like Zoria. I'm not. Shoot her right now. I can't. I can't. I will. No, you won't. I, uh... oh, you won't. You won't kill her. You won't kill anyone anymore. Anita, go away from here. Not yet. He loaded you. No. He killed me. I'll get a doctor. No. I'll get a doctor. No, I have to die. You know that, don't you? I don't want you to die. <laughs> Even if you were, Zoria. Even if you were. You've become another person. No. No, I'm still Zoria. You see, the real life, the long life, the working life is the caterpillar. The butterfly only, only lives a short day. The butterfly is only a dream. A caterpillar's dream. I love you. And I love you. And it's just as well that I die. You're not Zoria. You're Stanley Parker. Only for a little while. But you see, slowly, I was becoming Zoria once more. Because that's the only life I really know how to lead. The only life I ever wanted. Goodbye, Anita. <laughs> Oh, no. Don't be sorry for me. Who else? What other human being has eaten the dust and tasted the sun? I have been both. The caterpillar and the butterfly. Oh. How many lives do we have? Surely it will be hasty to say only one. The caterpillar has two. How many lives have you had? Or how many lives are you leading now? I only have one that I know of, and I'll be back to tell you how we might share an experience in just a few moments. Three people were killed in our story, but that wasn't what it was all about. It was about the chrysalis, the coffin with the golden nails, where the magical changes take place. And consider an ordinary, simple creature 
with nothing even faintly resembling our intelligence, can create all that is dull to all that is beautiful. Why is that beyond man, who is the highest form of life? When, if at all, shall we ever learn to do that? Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Marion Seldes, Ralph Bell, and Christopher Tabori. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. WOR's Mystery Theater was brought to you tonight also in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.